from Hollywood, Camel Cigarettes present the Screen Guild Players. Our stars, Cary Grant, Loretta Young, and David Niven. Our play, The Bishop's Wife. Our host, Camel Cigarettes. Experience is the best teacher. Try a camel. Let your own experience tell you why more people are smoking camels than ever before. Yes, try a camel on your T-zone. That's tea for taste and tea for throat. Your true proving ground for any cigarette. See how camels' rich, full flavor pleases your taste. See how camels' cool, cool mildness appeals to your throat. Tonight, Camel Cigarettes take great pride in presenting the Screen Guild players in Samuel Goldwyn's smash hit, which has been honored with five Academy Award nominations this year. And starring in their original roles, three of your very favorite people. Loretta Young, David Niven, and Cary Grant. The Camel Screen Guild players bring you The Bishop's Wife. Let's just suppose that you were married to a bishop. To a bishop who was trying to build a cathedral. Suppose you saw him growing haggard with his cares, harassed by the petty selfishness about him, irritable, frustrated, and completely unhappy. And then suppose that suddenly, quite suddenly, he changed, became again the simple, charming man you'd once fallen in love with. Now tell me, wouldn't you be apt to call that a miracle? I don't think as long as I live I shall ever forget that particular day. I've been out shopping all afternoon, and I've forgotten my problems for a while. And when I got home... Julia, is that you? Oh, yes, dear, yes. Oh, Henry, I'm so sorry I'm late. I went down to get our Christmas tree for Mr. Minetti. You remember him, don't you? And I stopped in at St. Timothy's. Oh, it's such a beautiful church, even if it is in the slums. And, Henry, everybody asked for you. And I ran into Professor Wuthridge, too. Oh, he gave me a contribution for your cathedral. Here. This? What is it? Well, it's an old Roman coin. Wasn't it sweet of it? The old fool. What did you think I can do with this? Oh, Henry. Well, at least it's a beginning. Now all you need is another four million. Julia, please stop being flippant about the cathedral. Oh, Henry, what's the matter, dear? Did the meeting go badly? Terrible. What a ghastly afternoon. Mrs. Hamilton again. What a ghastly woman. Just because she's pledged all that money she wants... That memorial chapel for her husband to dominate the entire cathedral. Well, you refused to allow it, of course. I most certainly did. Good. She marched out of here like a wounded tigress. I had a most unchristian impulse to pick up the blueprints and give her a good whack over the mink coat. Oh, Henry, you mustn't let her upset you so. Especially now before Christmas. Look, why not postpone the cathedral a while? At least until after Christmas. Well, that's impossible. I'm to raise even part of the money we need. I must take advantage of the Yuletide spirit. You could only see your poor, harassed face. Well, you're not helping it any. Henry, what's happened? What's happened to us in our marriage? We used to have so much fun together, you and Debbie and I. We used to be happy. We used to make other people happy, too. That was your gift, Henry. You're not a financier and you're not a promoter. Julia, you can't see beyond the end of your nose. The cathedral must rise. I want it to stand like a mighty beacon. I want it to shed its light. Oh, save that for your next committee meeting. I'll go see if dinner's ready. Oh, Julia, wait. Yes? I'm sorry, dear. I've been so upset. Maybe I can forget it for a day. Henry. Maybe I can take tomorrow off. Maybe we can go out together. Where? Oh, just walk around as we used to. And uh-huh. Go and see the professor, perhaps, and then go out in the park and watch them skating. You know, that sort of thing, darling. Perhaps we might have lunch at Michelle's. Do you remember, Julia? Michelle's? Oh, Henry, we haven't been there in ages. I'll get it, dear. All right. Hello? Bishop Braun speaking. Mr. Trevor? Yes, how, how are you? Uh, tomorrow? Oh, well. For lunch? Couldn't we make it another day? I... Oh, yes, I understand. Very well, I'll be there. Tomorrow. For lunch. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, Julia, I'm sorry. It's the altar committee. You I promised them a week... You try to explain, Henry. I'll just see a document. Dear God, what am I to do? Help me. Tell me what I am to do. Please, God, help me. Please. What I... I thought I... Good evening. Good evening. Uh, strange, I didn't see you come in. Oh, that's not strange. You weren't supposed to. What can I do for you? Oh, that isn't the question. The question is, what can I do for you? Look, I'm afraid you'll have to telephone my secretary for an appointment. I'm just about to go into dinner. Oh, that's all right. All right, Henry. The soup will keep warm. Yes, but I... Now, first of all, you asked for help. I? When did I... Who told you I asked for help? Who, Who are you? I'm an angel. <laughs> mm -hmm. No wings at the moment, but... Uh... An a... Oh, no. I, I knew it. I, I'd just been working too hard. Yes, I know, Henry. It's difficult to believe, even for you. You can't imagine an angel coming down to earth. No, frankly, I, I can't. Well, you needn't think we relish the trip. Not the way things are down here these days. But we go where we're sent. There's always work to be done. For example, this, uh, this cathedral of yours. It needs a, a... Henry, you do believe me, don't you? You're big enough to know that I am what I say I am. I... How can I be sure I only have your word? Well, surely a bishop can trust the word of an angel. Oh, I'd like to, but... I'd like to very much, but what do you propose to do? Perform a miracle? If necessary. Well, then why don't you do it? Why don't you create the cathedral with one wave of your hand? Oh, no, Henry, that would be a mistake. People would be puzzled. They'd write letters to the newspapers demanding an explanation. And you couldn't explain it. Because no man could ever admit he'd been visited by an angel. But still, I don't... I, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were Julia, this is... A... Hello, Julia. I'm Dudley. Henry has engaged me to help him with his work. You mean you're going to be his assistant? That's it. I'm going to help him get some rest and relaxation. Oh, that's what I've been praying for. You too? Oh, yes, for weeks. Tell me, when will you start? Tomorrow morning, unless uh, Henry wants to change his mind. Well, I do. Oh, no, no, I'm sure he doesn't. Oh, Henry, I'm so happy. Let's have Dudley stay for dinner, and then you... Oh, that's strange. He's gone. I imagine he wasn't very hungry. But to disappear so suddenly... Oh, it's just a way he has. Henry, why are you so nervous? 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 I, I'm, not, I'm not nervous. Come along now. Let's, let's have our dinner. Here, have our dinner. Oh, uh, no, come along. <laughs> let's eat. <laughs> You're here already. Bright and early. Thought I'd get busy while you finished your breakfast. I believe that's my mail you have in your hand. Yes, yes, yes. I was just looking through it. Are you expecting a letter, perhaps? Oh, one never knows. But if I should get one, the stamp's going to be worth saving. <laughs> now, look, Henry, don't worry about this mail. I'll get it all answered and filed and... Uh... Never mind the mail. That's work for a secretary, not for a... for an angel. Aha. So you're beginning to believe that I really am one. Well, I don't know what to believe anymore. Well, look here, if you've got a spare miracle about it, I can use one. For what? To get the cathedral built? Well, that's most important, of course. Or to make Julia happy. I don't know what you mean. You know, Henry, it's difficult for me to help you until I'm sure of what you really want. Um, tell me, uh, what are your plans for today? Uh, conference at ten, committee meeting at lunch. At lunch? Hmm. Didn't Julia want to go to Michelle's? Oh, I know, I suggested it, but what can I do? I think apparently. Uh, what is Julia going to do about it? Oh, she's told the maid she could have the day off to get her Christmas shopping done. Julia's taking Debbie to the park. Oh, I wish she could go to Michelle's. I wish she could go with all my heart. Well, if you really wish it, Henry. Don't worry. I'm sure it'll come out all right. <laughs> I'll ever be able to skate. Oh, of course you will, Debbie. It just takes a little practice, that's all. Now then, here we go. Now just hold on tight to Mummy. And... You know, I think she's ready to skate by herself. Why, Dudley. Go ahead, Debbie, try. Can I, Mummy? Well, yes, I suppose so. Watch me now. Watch me, Mummy. Watch me. You see? Oh, she won't fall. I mean, she won't scrape her shins or something. Certainly, and she'll love it. Oh, Debbie. She's getting up. She's quite all right. Well, I suppose it's, it's all part of the learning. 
Dudley, what are you doing out here? Shouldn't you be working? Mm, it's almost time for lunch, you know. I think, uh, I think everyone ought to relax at lunch. Oh, I wish you could make Henry see it that way. I'll try. I thought I'd go down and have lunch at Michelle's. Ever hear of it? Michelle? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, it's a lovely place. Henry and I used to go there often. Well, why not come along with me? To Mich... You mean you and I? Oh, no, no, I couldn't. Why not? I'm sure that Henry wouldn't mind. I'd well, explain to him that, well, that we just... No, uh... no, it isn't that. But you see, I, I gave Matilda the day off to do her Christmas shopping, and, and and so I have to take care of Debbie, and she... Mrs. Brown? Why, it's Matilda. Mrs. Brown, I thought I'd find you here. I can take Debbie now, if you wish. But, Matilda, you're shopping. Oh, I finished it. I finished it so fast, it, it was like a miracle. Well, Julia, what do you say? I... No, no, I'm afraid not. I I promised Debbie I'd teach her to skate. Mommy, look! Look, Mommy, I'm skating! Well, Julia, any other reasons? No. No, not a reason in the world. Oh, Henry, the most wonderful thing. Dudley took me to Michelle's. Isn't he an angel? Mm. Yes, I'm sure he is. <clears throat> and, darling, you know what? He ordered the entire meal in French. He speaks it beautifully. No doubt he spent a lot of time in France. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Especially Paris. Oh. I've had to do quite a bit of work in Paris. Oh. <laughs> and, and, Henry, then we met Professor Wuthridge. And you know that book he's been working on for years? Well, Dudley gave him some new ideas. Oh, not new, really. They're very old. Well, something to do with Caesar and Cleopatra. Honestly, Dudley, you know so much. Sometimes you almost frighten. Oh, in that case, I'm sorry I ever learned anything. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for tonight, Dudley has the most heavenly idea. What again? Mm -hmm. Well, the ice on the lake will be solid by tonight, and you need some exercise. Henry, we're all going skating tonight. I'm sorry, Julia, not tonight. I've, I've made an appointment for tonight. Oh, no. With Mrs. Hamilton. It's very urgent. I've made an important decision. Well, in that case, I... And believe me, Julia, I'd like to see you go skating. I wish you could go with all my heart. But... Well, now, look. If you're busy, why don't I take Julia? Oh, that's a wonderful idea. And then you could join us later. Couldn't he, Dudley? Mm, depends on how long he'll be kept at Mrs. Hamilton's. Oh, well, what time is your appointment, Henry? Eight o'clock sharp. Well, if you could sort of hurry it up. Then... Don't worry, Julia. I will be with you by nine. My dear Bishop, you can't imagine how your change has delighted me. Though I was sure that mature reflection on your part... You do see it all as I do now. Exactly as you see it, Mrs. Hamilton. And uh, if I may ask about the money... I shall instruct my lawyer to turn it over to you. One million dollars. Now, of course, the memorial chapel will be placed... Just where you specified, I assure you. And the dedication? I wouldn't want my husband's name on some little brass plaque. Oh, it shall be incised in marble. Large letters, gilded. Oh, nice. And about the large window depicting St. George and the dragon... Yes? If the face of St. George might suggest my late husband... Yes, yes, of course... Is uh, anyone you see as the dragon? Oh, any dragon. <laughs> we'll discuss the details when the new plans are drawn. Oh, thank you so much, Mrs. Hamilton. I, I hate to be rushing, but Julia's waiting for me, and I... Oh! Oh, my goodness! What is it, Bishop? Well, this, this chair, I seem to be sticking to it. Well, how in the world could that have happened? I have a very good idea. Oh, Stevens! Stevens? Uh, yes, madam? There's something wrong about the Bishop's chair. Oh, it must be the new varnish, madam. The finisher should have warned us. I trust I am not damaging the chair. Oh, not at all. Stevens, call a furniture shop. Call a plumber. Get some turpentine. Do something. At once, madam. I'll have his reverence delivered in no time at all. Really, Bishop, it hardly does any good for your pace that way. But it's almost ten o'clock, Mrs. Hamilton. Uh, and Julia's waiting. If I could only just shake this chair loose. I'm afraid Stevens is having difficulty finding a workman. It's rather late, you know. Yes, I... Yes, I know. Well, don't be nervous. Have a chair. Thank you very much. I have a chair. <laughs> Mrs. Hamilton, may I... May I use the telephone? Of course. It's right here. You're very kind. Hello? Matilda? Matilda, this is Bishop Brougham. I'm at Mrs. Hamilton's and I want to come home. Matilda, I'm afraid you're going to be a little shocked. Will you please bring me over a pair of trousers? Henry, we 
waited and waited for you. Why didn't you come? Yes, what kept you so long at Mrs. Hamilton's? A chair and other things. Oh, it was wonderful on the lake. And you should have seen Dudley. He skates divinely, just as though he had wings. I can just imagine. <clears throat> well, I, uh, I'd better go up and see if Debbie is covered. I'll be right down. Now then, Dudley. Yes? There is one thing I know. Julia is absolutely blameless. Of course she is. You deliberately stopped me from joining you. Julia had a very good time. And you? Delightful. Of course, I was only there by proxy as your representative. Is that included in the normal duties of an angel? Ah, sometimes, Henry, angels must rush in where fools fear to tread. I haven't the faintest idea what that means, and I don't want it explained to me. Furthermore, I, I've solved my problem, and, and you can go. Mm -hmm. So Mrs. Hamilton is giving you the money for the cathedral. Mm -hmm. So you made a slight sacrifice of principles, Henry. Now look at that picture. Isn't that glorious edifice worth it? Well, I'm not so sure of its glory at a time like this. Oh, you're not? No. These are lean years for the world, Henry. So many people need food. So many need shelter. That one big roof could make many little roofs. Well, well it's done now. It's all, it's all settled. You came here so I could get a cathedral, and I've got a cathedral. And now there's only one more thing I want from you. Mm -hmm. And what's that? Get out. I want you to get out of here at once. In just a moment, David Niven, Loretta Young, and Cary Grant will be back at the Camel Screen Guild microphone in Act Two of The Bishop's Wife. Offhand, you wouldn't say that an angel, a bishop, and his wife are the best subjects for light sentimental comedy, would you? It takes a deft director to mix these unusual ingredients properly and the best kind of acting. Yes, it takes the kind of superior ability that can be attained only through experience. Experience is the best teacher, whether it's in making a motion picture or choosing a cigarette. Millions of camel smokers know that. You know, more people are smoking camels than ever before. Yes, millions of smokers choose camels after trying and comparing different brands of cigarettes in their tea zone. That's teeth of taste and teeth of throat, where you judge any cigarette. They compared the different brands for flavor, for mildness, and for all-round smoking pleasure. Yes, experience has taught smokers everywhere that it's camels for rich, full flavor and cool, cool mildness. More people are smoking camels than ever before. Experience is the best teacher. Try a camel on your T-Zone. See if you don't agree with millions of other smokers that camels suit your tea zone to a tea. And remember, camels by the carton are the best buy. <laughs> Camel Cigarettes now present Act Two of The Bishop's Wife, starring Cary Grant, Loretta Young, and David Niven. of course, to come downstairs and find Dudley gone. But of course, I know now he really wasn't gone. The very next afternoon, Christmas Eve, while Henry and I were out making calls, Dudley was busy in Henry's study. Hmm. Mm -hmm. What have we got here? Oh, my, Henry's sermon. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here to... Dear me. Same old stuff. Dry as dust. Oh, I think we ought to improve on this. Mm -hmm. All right, you old Remington, take a sermon. Mm. Yeah, that's the general idea. Now, keep it up. Mm -hmm. Fine. Mm -hmm. Fine. Now, you stay with that until you're through. I've got a little call to make. I appreciate your dropping in, Mr. Dudley, though I'd no idea that the bishop had engaged an assistant. I can't imagine why he didn't tell me. Oh, well, he's been so busy. Hmm. Lovely home, Mrs. Hamilton. Yes, I'm quite proud of it. Furnished entirely in antiques, you know. Except the piano, of course. The piano? Huh? You know, I was just admiring it. Oh, do you like it? Oh, yes, indeed. The piano is my favorite instrument. Uh, next to the harp. Ah, nice tone. I have it tuned every two months. I always say that if you want to get the best out of a piano, you've simply got... What? What's that you're playing? This? I'm the only living person who knows that composition. Yes. Well, 
It's a shame that only you and I appreciate the lost genius of Alan Cartwright. You know about Alan Cartwright? Of course. He was brilliant. Killed at the Battle of San Juan Hill. But that was 50 years ago. You couldn't have known. Well, I'm a lot older than you think. Still, I, I can't believe. Now tell me. Tell me, my dear. Tell me about Alan and you. Alan Cartwright was the only man I ever loved. We were engaged to be married. Alan had nothing, and I was afraid of poverty. So he went away. I never saw him again. I never loved my husband. My whole life has been a lie. I can never be forgiven. Never. Ah, don't say such a thing. You will earn forgiveness. Are you sure? Sure? Yes, I'm sure. Now, chin up, Agnes. I believe that Henry and Julia are here. They are? Oh, I didn't hear the doorbell. You will. Oh, but I can't see them now. I won't. Oh, of course you will. You'll welcome them in your usual warm-hearted manner. Uh, Mrs. Hamilton is expecting you. Will you go right in, please? Dudley, you'll stay for dinner, won't you? Oh, I'm afraid I can't. I have a great deal of work to do, but go on. You mustn't keep them waiting. Yes, yes. Excuse me for a moment. Mrs. Brom, my dear, how sweet of you to come. And Bishop, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. And um, Merry Christmas to you too, Mrs. Hamilton. Oh, come now, we're such good friends, I shall call you Henry. And you must call me Agnes. And Julia, you too, won't you, my dear? Well, yes, Agnes. <laughs> I was just saying to Dudley here that... Why, that's strange, he's gone. Dudley, you mean he was here? I should have known it. Henry, he's the most marvelous person. How did you ever find him? It was more or less of an accident. It was a miracle. Oh, indeed it was. Why, in just a few moments, he made me understand so many things. Henry, I must talk to you. It's most important. Oh, about the memorial chapel? You, you've changed your mind? Yes, I've changed it completely. I'm going to give my money to those who really need it. To the hungry and the homeless here in this city and everywhere. And, Henry, I want you to direct the whole thing. No cathedral. Oh, Henry, isn't it wonderful what Dudley's done? Yes, wonderful. Oh, thank you very much, Mrs. Hamilton. Good evening. But, dear, where are you going? I'll be home, Julia. I, I don't know. Sometime later on, I'm going for a walk or something. It's not Mrs. Hamilton I can take, take that in my stride, but Julia, 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 too, I can't fight back. Why not, Henry? Why can't you fight for Julia? Fight against Dudley? You're not even trying. How can I fight him? He's an angel. Of course. That's where you have the advantage, Henry. Advantage? Yes. Remember? Dudley's an angel. But you are a man. A man? That's right. Yes, that's right. I am a man. I say. Reverend, were you talking to me? No, I... I was just... Oh, Merry Christmas, my friend. Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas to you. Oh, Julia, I was just saying goodnight to Debbie. I, uh, I left a little doll on her bed. Oh. Don't be surprised if she calls it her angel. It's, uh, it's a sort of remembrance. Hmm? Oh, you're going away? Yes, yes, I think my work here is almost finished. Uh, where will you be going now? Wherever they send me. Who are they? My superior officers. Oh. Dudley, don't go. Oh, I'm sorry, Julia. I must. But this last week, ever since you came, everything's been so wonderful. Just like heaven on earth. Dudley, I don't want you to go. Believe me, Julia. I haven't any say in it. You do believe me? Yes. Yes, I believe you. Uh, I'll go up and look at Debbie now. Goodbye, Dudley. Goodbye, Julia. Julia, are you in here? Oh. Oh, it's you. Oh, hello, Henry. Dudley, I have never before fought with an angel, but I suggest that you take off your coat and put up your dukes. Uh, Henry, Henry, don't you realize that as an angel I could quite possibly destroy you with a bolt of lightning? I don't care. Julia means more to me than my life. I'm not going to lose her. All right, now put down your fist, Henry. I have good news for you. I'm going. I'll accept that as a fact when I see it happen. Oh, you can trust me, Henry. You see... Your prayer has been answered. Well, that's not true. I prayed for a cathedral. No, Henry. You prayed for guidance. It's been given you. Oh, just a minute, sir, please. 
Well, goodbye, Henry. Dudley, if we should need you again, would you come? Not I. I should ask for an assignment at the other end of the universe. Because I was so difficult? I'm sorry, Dudley. Oh, no. This difficulty was in me. Take her in your arms, Henry. And hold her tight. Coming, sir. Kiss her for me, you fortunate Henry. He's gone. Just disappeared. Henry, dear, the bells have started. You have a sermon to preach, you know. You'll have to hurry if you're going to get there. Oh, Henry, what is it? Julia. Julia, darling. Oh. Why, Henry. Now, that's what I call kissing, Henry. I couldn't have done as well myself. Our stars, Loretta Young, Cary Grant, and David Niven will be back in just a moment. According to a nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. This survey was conducted by three leading independent research organizations. They asked 113,597 doctors, doctors in every state in the Union, what cigarette they smoked. The brand name most was Camel. Well, of course, doctors smoke for pleasure, just like everyone else. And for pleasure, millions of smokers choose Camel's rich, full flavor and cool, cool mildness. <laughs> And now I know I'm speaking for millions when I say thank you, Cary Grant, David Niven, and Loretta Young for your captivating performances. And Loretta, may I add how happy we all are about your Academy Award nomination for The Farmer's Daughter. Oh, thank you, Roy. Well, it couldn't have happened to a nicer girl. You know, this is Loretta's second appearance with the Camel Screen Guild players in a month. Which just shows how we all feel about the Motion Picture Relief Fund and its country house. Both largely supported by this program. Am I right, Brother Grant? Brother David, I'll say amen to that for two reasons. I'm thinking of the men in the service men's hospital who get free camels every week, the gift of the makers of camel cigarettes. Among the hospitals to receive free camels this week are the Veterans Hospital Wilmington, Delaware, the U.S. Army Brook General Hospital, San Antonio, Texas, and U.S. Naval Hospital, Brooklyn, New York. Well, happy smoking, gentlemen. Good night. Good night. Good night. Don't forget, Monday night is always a brilliant event in the Camel Screen Guild Theater. Hollywood's greatest stars in Hollywood's greatest stories. Next Monday night, another great radio scoop. It was a smash hit on Broadway and a smash hit on the screen. That hilarious study of Back Bay, Boston, the Lake George Atlee. It will star Ronald Coleman, Peggy Cummins, Richard Hayden, and Edna Best. Be sure to listen. The Bishop's Wife was directed by Bill Lawrence, adapted for radio by Harry Cronman with music by Wilbur Hatch, and was presented through the courtesy of Samuel Goldwyn, whose latest production is A Song is Born. Cary Grant will soon be seen starring in the RKO production, Mr. Blanding's Bill's His Dream House. David Niven appeared through the courtesy of Samuel Goldwyn. Listen to Vaughn Monroe with Colonel Stupnagel and their guest, Louis Prima, on the air for Camel Cigarettes every Saturday night over most of these CBS stations. This is Michael Roy in Hollywood saying good night and won't you have a camel? This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.